as you can probably guess by my very stylish outfit, I am at the hospital again. So I guess it's story time. Um, all right, quick summary. So, you know, a couple weeks ago I had the radiotherapy treatment. Everything went really well. They just gave me a few potential cis, uh, symptoms that if this comes up, uh, it could mean there's an issue. So go to the emergency room immediately. One of those things was projectile vomit, the kind that has like no nausea, comes with no warning, like one second you're fine, the next you're throwing up everywhere. And yesterday, I forget around what time, because the last couple of days have been kind of a little insane. <laughs> but I think it was around like eight o'clock, something like that. I'm in bed, I'm trying to sleep, and I'm like, something is wrong. Luckily, I barely had time to make it to the bathroom and just like threw up and threw up and threw up. And then went back to bed. And then after a while, I'm like, hmm, I feel weird. So I went and then, oh, cool, I have diarrhea too. So in the next hour or two, I forget exactly how long, I kept like throwing up and having diarrhea over and over again. And it's like, I knew that I had to go to the emergency room. I also knew that, okay, I need to get part of this out of my system now because otherwise there's no way I'm going to make it. I'm just going to throw up everywhere and crap my pants everywhere. So anyway, get through it as much as I can in the beginning. And then when it gets to the point, I'm like, all right, it seems to have calmed down enough. I can go to the emergency room now. The next step in that process is what is the best approach? Do I call an ambulance? Do I call a taxi? Do I call an Uber? Do I call a friend? The issue with all those options is there's always a delay before they get to your place, pick you up and drive you to the hospital. So given everything, I'm like, it's probably quicker if I just go there directly myself hop on the metro, get there, like it'll take about 40 minutes, and then we can take care of this. So pack everything that I need, um, start heading out 50 meters after leaving my apartment. I'm feeling lightheaded. I have to sit down for a couple of minutes. I'm like, ooh, this, this is not good, but I don't have a choice, let's keep going. So I keep going and literally less than a block from my apartment, I see a taxi pull up and park. So I'm like, okay, cool, uh, this is a sign. I go knock, I'm like, hey, are you, um, you know, are you free? He's like, no, sorry, I'm done my shifts. I'm like, listen, um, I'm really, really not feeling well. I need to get to the emergency room as quickly as possible. Is there any way that you can drive me? And he kind of looks at me, hesitates for a couple of seconds, but he sees like how out of it I am and, you know, the fact that I need help. So he's like, yeah, okay, get in. And he drives me. So it's like literally maybe 20, 25 minutes after leaving my apartment, I'm at the hospital. So first of all, this is just a perfect reminder that I'm doing exactly what I meant to do. My timing is perfect. The universe is providing for me. Everything is amazing, which seems weird to do given the situation that I was in yesterday and well today too. But that sensation of just everything is perfect and gratefulness and everything that has never left. Okay, maybe I was a little distracted in the last 24 hours of, because of all the throwing up and the puking and everything but I still remain completely grateful. And I still, even though I'm here in the hospital and everything, like I still feel healed and I still know that everything's gonna be all right. There's, there's no doubt regarding that. So anyway, eventually we get to the hospital, head down to the emergency room, uh, go straight up to the counter and be like, hey, this is the situation. Is there any way I can see someone right now? They're like, no, unfortunately, you need to wait for us to call your number. So go sit down and wait and it's just at that point, it's like, I don't know if I'm going to throw up. I don't know if I need to go use the bathroom, but I, I don't want to risk getting up. Uh, like my head is pounding. I'm having shivers. I'm cold. I'm like my entire body is shaking. It's like every bad thing that could be happening is happening. So I just sit there, close my eyes, try to just focus and distract myself and just wait. So maybe like, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes later, they call me, they call me in, ask me questions, end up throwing like a crap ton, both on the ground and in some pots that they have, uh, <laughs> explain the situation and everything. Once that's done um, with pots and Kleenex, so next time I throw up, I'll, I'll be okay. <laughs> um, I go to a second waiting room and they're like, someone's gonna come call you, give you a room. Ideally with the bathroom if possible because of the throwing up and the diarrhea <laughs> and uh, Yeah, just just wait there. So I'm not sure how long I'm gonna have to wait So 
So I go back over there, wait, and once again, you know, the shakes, the shivers, the chills, everything. Uh, there's a bathroom not too far away, so I eventually go uh, do diarrhea there. And, you know, at this point, I've done it so much diarrhea and vomiting that I've completely lost track. I'd say it's maybe around like six to eight times at least. That's kind of the ballpark range. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was pretty intense. And the thing is, because of the dehydration from all that throwing up and all that diarrhea, it's just like, I'm super, super, super thirsty. The problem is, I know that the more I drink, the more it's going to make me throw up because I have nothing left in my stomach except the water. But I'm like, at this point, I'm so dehydrated that it's better to drink a crap ton knowing that I'm going to throw up again than trying not to drink and waiting God knows how many hours for me to get a room and for me to get an IV so I can actually get fluids in me. So yeah, <laughs> wait a few hours, eventually get a room. Uh, not long after I, I'm in my room, I throw up everywhere once again. It's like that kind of throw up that it's like just water. Well, not just water, water and bile and stuff, but it's like it's so intense. It's like I'm lying down. I don't even have time. Like I start sitting up and it just spews out. So it's like there ends up being puke everywhere. It's freaking gross. But, you know, that's that's the thing. Everything I've experienced in the last nine months, in the last few weeks and yesterday, it's just like things like that don't bother me anymore. Like it's so not a big deal. Like, okay, sure, I, I feel bad. Like it sucks. Someone has to clean it up. But it's like, hey, it's it's just part of the process. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and then eventually I wait. And at some point I'm like, crap, I got to go to uh, to the bathroom again. Unfortunately, I'm kind of in isolation. So I don't, I'm not allowed to go to the bathroom. So I have to use one of, hold on, I have one right here. Let me show you. Yep. One of those bedpans. And unfortunately, they're very, very shallow. And when you have diarrhea, it splashes. So literally... I pooped all over myself, which was gross. So after that, I'm like, okay, I, I can't stay like this. So I just like called the nurse. I'm like, hey, I know I'm not supposed to leave, but can I just leave for like five minutes to go to the bathroom and clean myself up? Because this is gross. Like I can't spend the night like this. Luckily, I thought beforehand to bring an extra pair of underwear. <laughs> so I was able to go to the bathroom, get cleaned up, change my underwear, come back. And then after that, around maybe four o'clock in the morning, uh, they finally did the tests. And the thing is, until I did the tests, they're like, you can't sleep. And I was just exhausted at that point. Like I hadn't slept and my body from like all that throwing up and all the like, you know, the, the diarrhea and the shaking and the shivers and like everything. It was just like, it was so tired. I was so exhausted. So I kept like struggling to stay awake. And then finally around four, they went, they did the test. And after that, I went back to my room and slept and it was amazing. The only problem is when I woke up the next morning, because of all the dehydration and everything, even though they gave me, gave me an IV and everything, but it's like, I just had like the most intense headache ever. So I spent most of the day today with that intense headache. They gave me a bunch of different medications. It didn't really seem to work. It's only more recently for the last like three, four hours that it's finally starting to diminish. Like I still feel it. But it's really not as intense. Like, it's bearable. I've been able to sleep. I, in fact, I slept most of the day on and off. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely not as bad as it could have been. And the conclusion of everything, the results of the test is, you know, you don't have to worry about anything. It's just there's a lot of swelling in your head as a result of the radiotherapy. So what we're suggesting is increasing the dose for an amount of time to make sure that everything is okay. They also mention another type of drug that has a similar effect. The only thing is there could be side effects to that. So they would need to keep me in the hospital to monitor me. So I don't really know exactly what's going on at this point. I'm just waiting. That's it's pretty much what being in the hospital is, just waiting around, not really knowing what's going to happen. And then hoping, well, not hoping for the best because I know everything's going to be fine. That sensation of, you know, perfectness and everything is perfect exactly the way it is. There's no doubt. There's no fear, no insecurity. Like that has remained so it's not a question of doubt. It's just a question of like not knowing what's going to happen. And that's okay. I'm okay with it. So yeah, just wanted to give you a quick update. This has not changed anything in my perspective or anything in my beliefs. It's just another step in the road.